a combat system with only one attack is not much of a combat system. So today we're going to be making a modular combo system, which will allow you to execute combat combos and also change them depending on weapon or whatever gameplay input you might want. Meaning that yes, you can actually change your combo mid gameplay with this system. And if you want to follow along with the finished project, there's a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can get the finished project file with all of these systems already in place for you to look through. Let's set up the basics that we're going to need. We already have a character and a sword. I'm assuming you have something similar set up already. If not, you can watch the previous video in this mini-series. Anyway, we're going to be making a blueprint class here of the type data assets, specifically the primary data assets. And we'll call this the BP attack data assets. Data assets are interesting blueprints because when we open it up, you'll see there's no viewport, there's no construction script, there's only the event graph, our functions, our macros, variables, and event dispatches. We're going to only use the variables here. You can add some basic functions to your data assets if you want to. We'll get to that in some other tutorials. That's not really relevant right now. What a data asset can do for you is it can be a storage for information, a collection of variables that you can use, which is very, very useful. So what variables do we need in order for this to work? Well, you can make this as complex as you want. In my own game, I'm using this to store the data for the damage, the knockback, the force that the character should use when dashing towards the enemy, the impact particles, the specific sounds for that specific attack, and so on and so forth. We're going to keep it to just using the damage and the specific animation for the attack because that in and of itself shows off the entire system. Everything else is just redundant. Starting off with that, making a variable for our damage, which obviously is going to be a float value. We'll set that to a default value of five for now. It doesn't really matter. Then the second variable is going to be our animation class. And that's going to be a little counterintuitive because of the shortcomings of the blueprint system itself. We're going to make that a object and a object class reference. This means that we can put any class that we want to into this variable. And I'll show you why we need that in a second. If you're using C++, this can be a little bit more user friendly in the end. Blueprint doesn't allow for the same flexibility. Sadly. Now, this BP attack data asset is going to function as the template for the actual data assets that we're going to make. So if you right click and instead of going through with blueprint class, you go to miscellaneous, you see the data asset option, which allows you to make a data asset. And since we've made a primary data asset, we can then use that as a template for making the actual data asset here. And that's what our attacks are going to be, the data assets themselves. So this is attack one. And when we open it up, we can see the damage that we can do is five with this. And we have a field for an animation class. So let's copy this over two more times for attack two and attack three. Now we need an animation class to put into this field. So let's get into that. I've put our animation blueprint in this folder here. And as you can see, when we open it up, we have our entire state machine here. And we're going to be changing out the attack state because we've got a very static, just this animation is in this state and we're going to dynamically change that during gameplay. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. The way you do that is by right-clicking your animation blueprint and simply creating a char blueprint class. And that we can call something like NMBP attack one. And then when we open up that child blueprint class, we'll see that we don't have access to our state machine anymore. So how are we going to change things around? Well, we do have access to a new asset override menu here. And that then gives us a drop down menu, which is just straight up our state machine. 
in which the attack can be overridden by any other animation belonging to this skeleton. So in this case, this is Sword Attack 1, so we want it to be Sword Attack 1. So let's duplicate this two times as well and open up the one that we're going to use for Attack 2. Open up all the drop-down menus that we need and we can choose Sword Attack 2 animation clip for that. And we do the same thing for BP Attack 3. We go into the attack and we find Sword Attack 3 animation clip and that is that. Now back in the data assets we can simply take these animation blueprint children and put those into the animation class variable that we've made. Each into their corresponding one. And now we've got these assets which house how much damage this specific attack will do and which specific animation will play when we use this attack. How are we going to use that information though? Because right now we're just on these data assets, how is the player going to actually be using that? And we're going to do this in a nice and structured way. So if we come back to our blueprints here, we have our character and we have our sword. The way we're going to do this is we're going to make the sword hold the data for the combo. That way we can simply swap out weapons if we have multiple weapons in our game. And when you swap out your weapon, you immediately will do your new combo as well. And on our sword, we're going to make a new variable. And we'll call that variable something like attacks. On the right-hand side here, we're going to change the variable type to being the type BP attack data assets. And that will be a object reference. That will give you a single value. So instead, we're going to change that into a array. And when we compile that, we get a option to add multiple of these assets. And you can see it gives you the option to choose which attacks you need for this specific combo. So let's do something like one, two, a one, two, and three. That will be a nice basic combo. Now this sword has the information on this array of what the combo for this specific sword looks like. Now, if you wanted to and make it a little bit more complex, you can actually influence this array during gameplay as well so maybe if you have a certain pickup that will add in a extra attack at the end or something like that that's entirely possible but that's a little beyond the scope of this video now that the sword has this information the player is going to be reading that off of the sword so let's open up our player blueprint as well so let's go over things real quick because we have a child actor component on this player and the child actor component is taking a different actor from all of our blueprints and using it as a component on this actor and in this case that will be our sword and as you can see it already has the proper combo on it if you're not entirely sure how child actor components work the previous part in this mini series does go a little bit more into detail about that so you could watch that but a child actor component is just that. It's a child actor component, and it's not a reference to our sword. So we're going to need to make a variable specifically for that. So we'll make a weapon variable here, and we'll make that of type sword, and it'll be a object reference. At begin play, we'll set the value of that. And luckily, with the child actor component, we can just get the child actor off of that. And if we cast that to our sword, now suddenly we have a possibility to get a reference to our sword data. So now we have a variable that we can use to reference our sword. Going back to our trigger attack input action here. Before this was relatively simple. We just enabled a bool and then the animation blueprint would trigger the attack and at the end of the attack it would disable the bool again so that we could trigger the attack over and over again this is where we're going to need to add a little bit more logic and a little bit more programming because we're going to need to use those attack data assets and this is where things get more and more interesting very quickly using the weapon reference here we're first and foremost going to set the damage on that because the damage is stored on the weapon itself as makes sense but how are we going to get the specific value that it should be set to, corresponding to the proper attack? Well, we can get the attacks array that we have made, and from there we can get a copy out of that array. Here we need to put in which index of the array we want to get. 
and you guessed it for that we're going to need to make a variable so let's make a current attack variable which will be of the type integer since we don't need any decimal places for that and that we will put into the getting node here this will now get us a reference to the specific attack that we want to be using right now we can simply get the damage variable on our attack and set that to the damage value for our weapon and we're going to do much of the same here for the actual animation but for that of course we're going to need to get a reference to our character's mesh and we need to set the anim instance class and this is the reason that we needed to use a generic object class as the type for our animation because the anim instance class node takes in a class reference and if you're using c++ you can actually get a class reference out of your object blueprint for some reason doesn't allow you to do that so this is a bit of a workaround for that no matter though we can get the animation class which i did misspell it looks like and hook that up into the set anim instance class now this will work but it will only ever do the first attack in the array because we're only ever getting the zeroth index which is not ideal so what we'll do is after we do all of that we get our current attack again and we simply increment that integer so it becomes one higher than it used to be so now if our current attack is zero it will set it to the value that's corresponding to zero then it increases our current attack so the next time we come through it will set these things to whatever is in attack one but that only allows you to go through the entire combo once because if we have six entries in our combo and we press a seventh time there's no seventh index there to look up so we need to do a little bit of a check there as well we need to check after we increment our integer we need to check if our new value here is greater than our array so this is the attacks array node length but it's of course not as easy as that because before we uh, plug that in we need to subtract one from it because the array itself starts counting at zero but there's a length node starts counting at one so if we subtract one that all matches up that then goes into a branching node which you can do by holding down the b key and just clicking in your event graph if that's false we are not at the end of the combo yet and we can just go into the set character attack if it is true however we simply set the current attack value back to being zero and now we have a functioning combo system so let's see what that looks like we can attack and everything works as you would expect it and as it should we have a combo system now and from here you can keep on building on this thing and improving things and making it much more like something like in my own game which has a bunch more information stored in each one of these data assets which is all getting used in its own unique and interesting ways if you want to take this project and look around in it and build on top of it maybe you can find a link down below in the description to my patreon where you can get the project files to play around with for yourself and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page